Dear Ruth, I dreamed about you again last night. I hold your face in my mind. I think about your hair getting longer. I think about your belly getting bigger. I think about our baby girl. I shot someone. I think I shot someone. It's gonna be okay. All you gotta do is wait for me. who doesn't know how, how would you describe this film to people i just I, I like to describe it as a folk song even mm. though it's a movie yeah um i mean it's a story of an outlaw in texas in the 1970s who breaks out of prison and sets off to find his wife and, and the daughter who was born while he was incarcerated and it's a very classic you know kind of a it's kind of a romance it's a classic romance that plays upon the mythology of westerns and, and outlaw movies and, and lots of movies like Bonnie and Clyde and Badlands and Thieves Like Us and Gun Crazy, all these classic movies about an outlaw couple on the run. It really plays on those tropes, but you know, it starts where most of those movies end. Those movies always end with a couple getting caught or in the worst cases dying like Bonnie and Clyde. And our movie starts right there where they're getting caught. Yeah. And then we go find out what happens afterwards. So it's all about the aftermath. Yeah, well, it's it's uh, the beginning that people don't expect. They kind of have to figure out what's going on. Yeah, there. it just drops you right in. Yeah, it just drops you right in. But the great thing about it is that you have once you if you if you jump into that, you have an entire history of movies to, to back up that beginning. So like, you everybody knows the story of Bonnie and Clyde. They know those those tropes, and so you can just go in knowing film history or, or history in general, and it kind of feel, it prepares you for what this movie is. Yeah, absolutely, and and uh, your leads are fantastic in this film. How did, how did you find them? How did you get Casey and... They, they read the script. I mean, I was asked, you know, a, a very wonderful question, which is who would you want to be in this movie? And Casey was the only person I wanted for Bob. I just knew right away he was the perfect guy for that character. And, and Rooney had, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, it was about to come out, and so I wasn't really, I didn't really know much about her because I'd seen her in Social Network and I'd seen the trailers for Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and I knew that she was uh, posed to be this breakthrough actress, but I didn't even know what she actually looked like, you know, because those two roles are so different. And, uh, and I was excited by that. I was excited by the fact that I didn't know who she was. I was like, she's a chameleon. And, and so I really, it really came down to just sending them the script and they watched the short film I made called Pioneer and I met with them and they said yes. It was like... You know, I was always expecting it to be hard to cast a movie. Like you, you, you imagine like going to number like numerous actors, and then they all say no. And, and this was a case of going to the people I wanted the most, and they all said yes. And from the time they read the script to the time we shot the movie, it was like four. It was like really, really fast. Yeah. Well, and then on top of that, you have uh, someone that I'm, I'm going to call it now. At some point, I think Ben Foster is going to win an Oscar. I, I for what? I I, I would I I hope that people are paying attention to him in this movie because I yeah. think that he. He does things that he's never done before, and his yeah. performance is, I mean, he's the heart and soul of the movie in a yeah. lot of ways. He's the moral center of the movie, and he is giving a performance that he's never done before, and he plays that character so perfectly. And I, yeah, one of these days he's going to, everybody's going to realize that he's not that character actor they think he is, and that he is one of the best leading men yeah. in the industry today. Yeah, but what is it about him that makes him so special you think because there is something very special about him. it it's his commitment I mean he commits to such a large degree I mean it's, it's like the stories you hear about Daniel Day-Lewis you yeah. know he does the same thing mm -hmm. he went to play this part in this film he plays a sheriff mm -hmm. he went and lived with a sheriff in Midland Texas for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and just to learn that way of life yeah. and to learn how they talk and what their what, what you know what that way of life is like and and he brings all of that to the set with him, and you know he's not going to talk about it. He's not going to say, "Well, this is what they do in Midland." He's just going to know, you know, how these people actually exist, and and then he lives that way on set, and it's a, a remarkable transformation that he embarks upon. And I think that he's been, you know, he's played a lot of like villains, like in Three Ten to Yuma, or um, weirdos, or or really wired characters, and. In person, he's such a gentleman. He's such a nice guy. And when I met him for the first time, I instantly wanted him for this part because I've never seen that side of him on screen before. And so it was a, a real treat to get to like work with him in that capacity in a way and to watch him give a performance that felt entirely new. Yeah. 
Well, the show is the Drew Pearson Show, and uh, Drew famously caught the Hail Mary catch, and, and I think everyone has a Hail Mary moment in their life where they just kind of have to go for it. They're not sure if it's going to work out, but it does. What do you suppose that was for you? <sighs> there's so I mean, there's so many. There was, constant Hail it was constant. It was like a, a litany of Hail Marys uh, every day of the shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, a big one was just like when we decided to shoot the movie on film mm-hmm. and decided that we knew we had a certain, a very limited amount of money and we had a very limited amount of time to make the movie. And we decided that we wanted to make the movie look like a classic Hollywood movie from the 70s. And, and, and that took time. And, and knowing that we, like 10 days into the shoot, we realized we don't have time to make this movie in this way, but we're already too far in. Yeah. So let's just push forward and just work as hard as we can and make it work, do what we can to make it work. And we pulled it off. It was incredibly difficult. And we didn't know, like, every day we're like, I don't know if we're going to finish this movie. I don't know if it's going to come in. Like, you know, if we run out of money, we're done. And, but we really wanted to make a movie that felt classic and felt old-fashioned and was made in an old-fashioned sensibility and an old-fashioned style. And so we, we just went for it.